Camogelo is on the phone with a question. Camogelo, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. And I'm yourself? very well, thank you. Camogelo, where are you phoning from? From Pretoria. From Pretoria? Yeah. And Pretoria is always hotter than Johannesburg. <laughs> yeah, it is. Is it warm there today? Yeah, it's a bit warm. A but bit. it was cold in the morning. Oh, I see. So it warmed up in the afternoon. Yeah. Maybe it's going to snow on the copy there. <laughs> Camogelo, I want you to look at the screen. Okay, I've yeah. written the question that you gave us. These trick questions are often very long and complicated. I want you to make sure that I've written the right question down. Uh, Just check it for me quickly. Yeah, it's correct. Are you sure? And yeah. is this big bracket supposed to be like that? The what? The bracket here? Yeah, it's correct. It's all times with a plus in the middle there. Hey? Yeah. Okay, good. This question is essentially about applying the reduction formulae. Okay, so just to do a quick recap, and we don't have much time, so I'm going to have to go quickly. Okay. We must know, to be able to answer the question, that all sexy teachers care, uh. and in that quadrant it's sine, tan, and cos. So in this quadrant, sine is positive. In the first quadrant, all are positive. In the third quadrant, tan is positive. In the fourth quadrant, cos is positive. You know that, eh? Yeah. Then in this quadrant, the 180 minus rule applies. This quadrant is the 180 plus, And this quadrant is the 360 minus. So we must know that if the angle is 180 minus, we're going to be in the second quadrant. If the angle is 180 plus, we're It's going to be in the third. Quadrant. And if the angle is 360 minus, we're going to be in the fourth. Happy? Yeah. Okay. One more slight complica complication, and that is the 90 minus and 90 plus. Okay. And the 90 minus and 90 plus applies to sine or cos only. So mm. 90 minus, the rule says that the angle becomes theta and the sine becomes cos. I wish I had time to explain to you why that is, but I don't. So yeah. we're going to just give you the rule and then apply the rule. All right? Okay. Maybe you can go to your teacher and ask her why it works that way. Yeah, I'll do that. Sine 90 plus theta. Which quadrant am I in if I'm 90 plus? 90 minus is first. 90 You're plus in the second. is second. Where sine is? Positive. So it will be positive cos theta. It, would doesn't, it doesn't stay sine. It changes to, to cos, cos because of the 90. Okay? Yeah. Now you can have, you can have cos 90 minus theta. 90 minus theta, Kamokelo, is which quadrant? 90 minus theta is the first. First. But because we have 90, the cos must change to what? To sine. Good. And cos 90 plus theta, that is the tricky one which I'm going to highlight. 90 tells us to change cos to sine, and it becomes theta, but it's tricky because 90 plus theta is which quadrant? Second. Second. <laughs> Where cos is? Negative. Negative. So we need a negative. It's the only 91 where we need a negative in front of our answer. And we're going to highlight that because students make a mistake with that. Cos 90 plus. 90 plus is second quadrant where cos is negative. That's why we put a negative in front of our answer and we change the cos to sine. Okay. Okay. So that very quickly is the theory that we need to know to be able to answer this question. So let's go and see how well we do here. Here we go. 180 plus X, Camogelo, is, which, third is which quadrant? It's the third quadrant. I'm laying. Third quadrant. Third quadrant, where tan is? Positive. Good. Then, look at this 540. It's huge. Why is it huge? Uh, because it's greater than 360 degrees. So when we have an angle which is greater than 360 degrees, what we do is we just take off 360. So our first step is to take 360 off that 540. Okay. okay? 
Okay. They're shouting in my ear about time, so we must move quickly. Okay. Sine of minus x, to get rid of this minus, it becomes minus sine, sine x. x. Then we've got, look here, we've got 90 minus, correct? Yeah. What happens to that sign if I go 90 minus? The it same. becomes? Yes. Oh. If I've got 90 and mm. I'm reducing, what happens to the sin? It becomes? Only sine. Uh-uh. Over yeah, here. that's where I got stuck. That's where you got stuck? Yeah. Because? Because look at my rules here. Uh, what did I say about 90 minus and 90 plus? You said that if it's saying, oh, it becomes cos. The ratio changes, correct. If it's sine, it becomes cos. If it's cos, it becomes sine. You happy? Yeah. So this becomes cos squared x. You tell me what happens to cos 90 plus x. It's going to be sine squared x. Just sign X because then there's no squared there. But okay. very tricky one. 90 plus. Which quadrant is 90 plus? It's in the second quadrant. Where cos is? Negative. Mm. But it's, yeah, it's negative. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. 10X. 10X. 180 plus X. Which quadrant is 180 plus X? It's the, the, the third quadrant. Third quadrant. Where cos is? Negative. Negative. You are answering this so well, <laughs> given the time that we have. <laughs> now look inside the big bracket. We've got minus sine x over 1 plus that fraction. Mm. We must get a lowest common denominator because we are adding fractions. Okay. So, so we'll have sine x. What is going to happen on top? It's going to be on top we're going to have... Hmm. Let me... Eh. Sine x times sine x is sine squared x. Yes. But it's minus. And then we have minus cos squared x. That cos squared x stays the same because it's already over sine x. Do you see? Okay, yeah, I do. Right. Now, so the first part there was about reduction. Now we have to use our identities to finish off. And you can see that when the angles, you see all the angles, we no longer have the 180 minus, 180 plus, 360 yeah. minus. You see all the angles are x. Yeah. We're now just going to go to the identities. Tan is sine x over cos x. Kamohelo, I'm sorry, but time is telling me I've got to go quickly. Okay. Okay. Tan x, always, when you're simplifying trick, tan x is sine x over cos x. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This thing on top here, I'm going to take out a minus. Oh. And I will have Maybe sine squared x plus cos squared x in brackets. Do you see? Yeah. Right. Now you can help me. What happens to this cos x and that cos, cos x there? They want to cancel each other. They cancel. So I'm left with plus sine x times minus 1 is minus sine x. Do you know how much sine squared x plus cos squared x is? It's equal to 1. Yes. Genius. <laughs> so that sine squared x plus cos squared x is 1. We have minus 1 over sine x. Okay. Do you see what I've done? Yeah, I do. Now what's my final answer? Your final answer is 1. Hmm, well done, Kamohelo. My final answer is 1. Yay! <laughs> yes, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, Kamohelo, it we've got about 30 seconds just to recap again. Okay. We first reduce, eh? Hey? Look mm -hmm. how we made all those angles go to x. Do you see? Yeah. Every see. single one of those angles is x. Where's it tricky? If it's 180 plus, 180 plus, the mm -hmm. ratio tan, state tan. Cos, state cos. But if it's 90 minus or 90 plus, what happens to the ratios? They it's change. If your original one is sine, it becomes cos. If your original one is cos, it becomes sine. And oh my goodness, this cos 90 plus x, which is so tricky because it becomes minus sine, sine. x. 90 plus x, second quadrant, where cos is negative. negative. Happy? Yeah. Inside this bracket, I'm adding fractions. How do we add fractions? We get a lowest common denominator. Right? Yeah. Then we pulled out the minus. And we had sine squared plus cos squared which we identified as 1. And the tan x we changed to sin x over cos x. 
We did a little bit of cancelling and we got a final answer of wow. one. Yeah. <laughs>